version 50 is officially out and no longer in beta, so you know what that means. Time to go over everything that's changed. Upon updating the game, it shows this cinematic. We start off with four new enemies that have been introduced, the butler, mask hornets, the old birds, and tulip snakes. The butler is an enemy that most commonly roams mansion moons, especially Dine. He will roam around and sweep innocently, but watch out because if you get too close or are alone, he will pull out his knife and chase after you. Mask hornets are an enemy alongside the butler. When you kill a butler, it will explode and mask hornets will be released from inside the butler. These hornets are just like circuit bees, they will roam randomly in the facility and are not killable, just like bees without their hive. Old birds are giant robots that roam the planet's surface. They are found inactive at the start of the moon and activate randomly during the day. They have a searchlight when players are nearby, and when spotting a player or other outdoor entity, they will fly over and shoot rockets at it. Their main killing features are shooting rockets, grabbing the player, and then torching them, or stepping on the player. They can only be killed by the Earth Leviathan. Lastly, we have the Tulip Snake, which is the newest addition. This enemy mostly spawns on the diverse fauna planets like March. The Tulip Snake is a really cute daytime entity that will lunge at the player and attach to their head. They will then flap their wings to attempt to lift the player off the ground. After some time, they will give up and get off your head, and then try again later. If enough are on your head, they will lift you off the ground and then drop you. This is how they kill players. Enough drops or being on too low of health when dropped, and the player will die of fall damage. They are only one hit to kill and can be hit off your head just like Snare Flea. Little bug freak. <laughs> oh my god, I got jump scared. <laughs> There's another one up the hill, I think. You have more than one, I'll let you fly. Three new moons were also added. The first moon is a tier 2 moon called Adamance that costs nothing to route to and can give about 800 to 900 average scrap. Here's a look at the moon. To access Adamance, you just type its name in the terminal like any other moon and route to it. So upon landing, you can see your main entrance over here. You have a bridge that goes to it. Or you can go down this pit here, and then, you know, back up over this hill here, and that's your access to main. Or you have a fire exit to the left over here. You can go to the left of ship and make a jump to get to it, or you can take the main route and go all the way around and get to the fire exit that way. The moon also has this little cabin here. Inside the cabin is an easter egg for the next moon I will talk about, which is Artifice. And so if you type that into the terminal, you can route to Artifice, but it won't show up on the moon list. It's a fairly larger size, but it does have a decent amount of loot. And it is most often facility. The next is a secret tier 4 moon that costs 1500 credits to go to and is called Artifice. Here's a quick look at that. Alright, so I'm going to access Artifice by just typing it in the terminal. I'm going to type Art. As you can see, it's 1500. So on Artifice, you're going to always have the old bird spawns. Now what's nice is you actually have these little warehouses that have levers. And when you pull the lever, it closes the garage door slowly. And so what you can do is trap these Radmex or these old birds. Both are common names for them inside these warehouses. And so if this guy were to wake up, you could aggro him, bring him inside the warehouse, trap him. And so that's kind of like the gimmick of this map. Uh, here you just have a either straight path to main and fire is just on this right side of it. Or you can take the outer edge way and go around the fence and then through this hole, which is always a good strat. 
As for the size, it's actually not too big for being a tier 4 moon, which is really nice because you can get a ton of loot. And so the loot you'll average on this is like 1,800 to 2,000 days if you're playing really well. Uh, Jetpack is a huge help for this. The last available moon is Embryon. It costs 150 credits and is more of a fun moon to go to rather than a moon you want to go to for loot because it is very dangerous. People are calling it the Troll Moon. Let's take a look at it. Alright, so same thing like Artifice, you'll just type in Embryon. Confirm. And you'll see very quickly why this is called the Troll Moon. So, when I zoom out on the moon, you can see all of the old birds that are currently inactive. You can also see this very big open area that leads all the way to Maine, which is right here. And it is just, it is just insane. Now you do have your fire exit even further over here. So this is your map as a whole, absolutely massive. And you have all these old birds that slowly will become active over time. Now, if we take a look at the map, not a huge map, but is still, still of decent size. But it only gives you about two hundred to four hundred dollars of loot, and it is just awful. It is like just as bad as experimentation, but three hundred times harder. And once you pull that apparatus, uh, good luck with all these guys. There is also a moon found in the code called Liquidation. Two new scrap items were added for version 50. An Easter egg, which basically has a random chance to explode when dropped. And this explosion will do a ton of damage to you, even killing you at times. This explosion can also kill enemies. This explosion is based off of a coordinate system. It seems based off the seed. However, these coordinates are very small and unpredictable, making the explosion unpredictable. Just be careful when you drop or throw them. The other scrap item is the knife. This is the knife that the butler has. If you kill the butler, you can acquire the knife. This knife swings as fast as you click, making it really fun to use with auto-clickers. However, the damage only updates every 0.4 seconds. So you're really not doing damage every single time you swing with the auto-clicker. Here are some clips with the knife. Is he gonna fall? That's insane. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Oh my god. That's insane, oh, bro. Oh. Additionally, a disco ball, bunny suit, and bee suit were added to the shop. They are amazing additions and make the game have a bit more casual enjoyment. Movement in the game has changed slightly. When you go up slopes, you are slightly slower, and when going down slopes, you are much faster. Some enemy adjustments were made. Giant is now killable, having 30 HP. This can be from anything that does damage, such as a shovel, knife, egg explosions, old bird, lightning, and more. When they are set ablaze, they will de-aggro from the player, and drop any player they are holding to eat. Then, they will run away and die after about 10 seconds. Bunker Spider went from power level 3 to 2. Baboon Hawks are only half power instead of 1 power each, and they spawn in pairs now. They also have distinct nesting areas marked by 3 wooden spikes. Additionally, they have 4 HP instead of 6, and do less damage to the player. Jester now starts winding earlier once spotting a player. With its timer at 13 seconds to 18 seconds follow time, it used to be 25 seconds to 42 seconds. Bees now leave the ship at 11.57 instead of 11.36. This basically means that they stop doing damage to you at this time. Item changes were also made. Stop sign weighs more, going from 21 pounds to 24 pounds. Shovel went from 8 to 14 pounds. Whoopee cushion value increased its range, now at $6 to $36, where it used to be $6 to $20. Maps also had some reworks. For foggy weather, the fog density is seed-based, and fog overall is slightly easier to see in. Dine is completely different, so let's take a look at that. Okay, so for Dine, 
Your ship spawns on one side and your entrances spawn on another. Or your path to the building. You're just going to pretty much go a little bit left of the ship and you can choose either the right or the left. They both kind of lead to the same place. Here's your fire exit. You're just kind of taking this path. And then if you're going to main, you just take a hard right here and go over the fence. Or you can go to the right of ship here. Then find your main. Um, as for size, not too much has changed. The main important thing to note was the top layout. That fire, you no longer need to make a jump or anything. And both fire and main are on the same side. On Dine, the minimum scrap increased from 20 to 22. Max indoor power increased from 15 to 16. There are less landmines and slightly less turrets. And now it can be rainy. For Titan changes, Titan max scrap decreased and the indoor size decreased slightly from 2.35 multiplier to 2.2. For bug fixes, Jester Aura or Jester Shielding is fixed. Crouch sprinting was removed. You can't hit crouch when sprinting. Crouch cheesing the Nutcracker was also removed. Now it points down and shoots you. Nutcrackers now detect any movement, not just camera movement. Here are a bunch of more additions and changes not yet mentioned. New spike traps can now be found on a lot of facility moons. These traps slam down in intervals or detect when players are under it. I already have a guide for them, so make sure to check it out. Link will be in the description. You can no longer ladder clip or apparatus clip out of the map because there's a death barrier everywhere now. Jetpack was slightly changed and feels even better to use. It accelerates a bit better and decelerates faster. Additionally, there is no more random or stored fall damage when using the jetpack. Bells make a new chime sound when dropped and can be heard by dogs. Whoopee cushion is no longer conductive. Shotguns are always 60 credits now, their shells are still worth zero. Facility rend is now bigger. And lastly, Assurance has slightly less maximum scrap. I will be having guide videos for all these new moons and enemies, so make sure you subscribe so you can learn everything about them when the videos drop. One final plug for my Discord and Twitch. I am very active in the Discord and stream almost every day on Twitch, so make sure to check those out and follow. And lastly, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video for Tulip Snake Guide. Have a wonderful day. Oh, and you can also now die from the fan in Maine for some reason.